in today's episode of Connecting Cultures. How many nationalities live in Turkestan? People of different nationalities live in the city. 30% of them are ethnic Uzbeks. What kind of traditions are shared both by Kazakhs and Uzbeks? Both among Kazakhs and Uzbeks, when the bride greets guests, she puts her hand on her heart. What do we know about the dish called asip? If you are in Turkestan, definitely try this wonderful dish. The history of the city dates back to the 500th year of our era. At that time, a settlement was formed on the territory of the modern Turkestan region. The Great Silk Road that connected Europe and Asia passed through it. In June 2018, by the decision of the first president of the Republic of Kazakhstan, or Sultan Nazarbayev, Turkestan acquired the status of a regional center. And in 2021, the city was proclaimed the spiritual capital of the Turkic world. My name is Faizullah Muradov. I'm a representative of Uzbek diaspora. This is the media center where I work. As you can see, this is a new building. It was commissioned not so long ago. Allow me to show you around. The international television channel Turkestan was created on the instructions of the leader of the nation, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. It broadcasts in three languages, covering the territories of the Turkic-speaking countries. Highly qualified media professionals work here. To work here, Faizullah quit his job in Moscow and moved to his hometown. Faizullah Hoja graduated from school with honors and while applying to one of Almaty universities, he scored high points. After completing his bachelor's degree, he continued his studies in Moscow, where he received a master's degree. Once he called and said he would stay to work in Moscow, and I, without telling him, bought a plane ticket and flew to see him. Upon arrival, I said, son, you will not stay here. Turkestan needs professionals. Television is a developing industry in the city. I went to the dean of the Moscow University and said that Faizullah must return to Turkestan. He didn't come back right away. He worked for another four months and then came back to his hometown with a diploma. When I worked for a Russian telecommunications company, of course I wanted to return to my homeland, to Turkestan. A new TV channel was opened here and upon arrival I got a job here as an engineer. First I showed my skills and shared my experience with colleagues. Since then we have been actively sharing our knowledge. In the team, I am the only Uzbek, but we do not divide our team by nationality. I moved here from Nur Satan. I worked as a leading specialist. Five months ago, Faizullah came to my department. From the first days, he showed himself from the best side. Faizullah was initially on probationary period and received several assignments, which he implemented with great enthusiasm. After successful implementation of all tasks, he fully joined our staff. Faizullah's peculiarity is that when emergency situations arise, he quickly makes the right decisions. We say among ourselves, if Faizullah is at work, then no doubt everything is in order. The TV engineer is a very important figure. The work of the technical department depends on him. And during a live broadcast, his actions acquire high significance, since mistakes are not permissible in his work. And Faizullah is very scrupulous in his work and smart beyond his years. When a job becomes the work of a lifetime, it turns into a favorite pastime. 
and then every workday brings pleasure and joy. This what perhaps happened to our today's hero. My workday starts early and ends late, but I'm not complaining because I love what I do. Faisula easily sees eye to eye with his colleagues and quickly became friends with them. We do not divide our team by nationalities, instead we work in peace and harmony. Every resident of Turkestan is fluent in the state language and realizes the importance of learning foreign languages. This trend is common among young people. At the same time, young people sacredly honor Kazakh traditions and customs. A responsible attitude to their history and the future is instilled by the older generation. All equipment at the media center was brought from abroad. These are the latest television developments from industry leaders, Canada, the US and Italy. After the installation of the equipment, the manufacturer trained the local personnel. Faisala quickly mastered the skills to work with new equipment, as he knew both English and Russian. He also speaks Kazakh fluently, which makes you even forget that he is Uzbek and that it's not his native language. First of all, it's important to know the language in order to share your knowledge with other people. The more languages you know, the better. I'm fluent in Kazakh, Uzbek and Russian. Well, I'm back from work. This is my home. There are seven people in my family. These are my parents, a younger brother, sister, my wife and child. Let me show you around. Our ancestors come from the village of Mamur Kokenov. My grandfather grew up in Turkestan and I live here from an early age. We were born and raised in Kazakhstan. We are Uzbeks by nationality. We observe all national customs of Uzbekistan as well as honor Kazakh traditions. Most of our neighbors are Kazakhs. We are very friendly with them. Our children grew up playing together. Some of them even studied at the same university. And on such holidays as Nauris and Eid Mubarak, we visit each other and, of course, we don't miss each other's weddings and family events. I am Faizullah's wife. We've been married for almost a year. I was born and raised in Turkestan. I graduated from the Kazakh school and at the university I studied in Kazakh language. The traditions and customs of the peoples of Central Asia are quite similar. The cultural boundaries of the Turkic-speaking countries are practically blurred. Therefore, Uzbeks living in Kazakhstan feel themselves at home. The traditions associated with the wedding ceremony and the arrival of the bride to the groom's house are very similar. When a new wife visits her husband's house for the first time, we Uzbeks greet her singing the Kazakh song called Jar Jar and put a scarf on her head. Then the bride greets the groom's relatives with a special gesture. She puts her hands to her heart. These customs are very similar among our peoples. Among the peoples of Central Asia, even if the daughter-in-law has been living in the groom's house for some time, she greets the older family members with a special gesture every day. This is a manifestation of respect for the husband's family. The elders wish her the very best in return. There is a deep meaning behind every such wish. Live long, be happy, be happy with Faisula and have many children. May your arrival in our family be blessed, be kind to both parents, and be healthy.
If there are many guests in the house, they may not hear or notice the bride, which is why she greets everyone three times. It's not difficult to be a bride in an Uzbek family. The traditions of our peoples are quite similar. In particular, the newly made daughter-in-law serves tea to each family member personally for 40 days while welcoming the elders. At the same time, there is a certain procedure for serving tea. Only a small amount of the drink should be poured into the cup. Otherwise, it will be a sign of disrespect. Despite the similarity of the cultures of the peoples of Central Asia, each has its own national cuisine. Uzbekistan is considered the birthplace of pilaf. There are 12 varieties of this dish. Pilaf is a favorite dish in many countries of Central Asia, and some even consider it to be a common dish for all countries. When you think of Uzbeks, the first thing that comes to mind is pilaf. In cooking, we use lamb, beef or horse meat, two types of carrots, onions, chickpeas, salt, turmeric, caraway seeds, raisins and rice. And now I will talk about the cooking process. First, you need to finely chop the onion. If you add two types of carrots, it will give the dish a special appearance and color. After chopping all the vegetables, you need to heat the oil. Then fry the onion, then add the meat and fry it over low heat for 20 minutes. After that, we add the carrots and fry them for 10-15 minutes. Then we add salt, raisins, caraway seeds, turmeric, fill it all with water and boil well. After boiling, we put the chickpeas and boil again. Then we rinse the rice thoroughly and soak it in the warm water for 20 minutes. The only thing left is to add rice and pour water over it. If desired, you can add garlic or chicken or quail eggs. We keep everything on low heat for about 20-30 minutes. One of the favorite dishes of Turkestan residents is a delicacy called asip. This delicacy is often found in the countries of Central Asia, in Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan and Tajikistan. If you are in Turkestan, definitely try this wonderful dish. We cook it at home. To cook this dish, we need the following ingredients – lamp casings as a base, rice, kidneys and pieces of tripe. This is how we cook asip.
Representatives of various nationalities who live in Kazakhstan honor their traditions and pass them on from generation to generation. National costumes are also part of the cultural values. They occupy a special place for each nation in Central Asia. I'm wearing an Uzbek national dress. Every girl should have such clothes before marriage. This model was produced in Uzbekistan. The dress is called brocade. It's made from a dress. Such dresses are sewn only in Uzbekistan by Uzbek masters. Each pattern symbolizes a particular plant, and each of them has its own meaning. The ornaments are embroidered with gold thread. Among the peoples of Central Asia, the bride occupies a special place in the family. She is the future mother and keeper of the hearth. That's why people of this country pay special attention to the upbringing of the bride and her clothes. I'm wearing an Uzbek national costume. This model was made by craftsmen who are engaged in the production of national costumes. The bride wears such a dress for the first 40 days after marriage, as well as during the Eid al-Ladha, or when receiving guests. The men's national clothes of Uzbeks and Kazakhs have similar elements, a chapan and a shirt. In ancient times, the presence of headdress was required. Men wore skull caps or special hats, while women wore headscarves. The skull cap is a common headdress. It comes in different shapes, angular, square, and round. Male skull caps are sewn without using beads or coins, and embroidery with pattern stitching has long been its main decor. Uzbeks have four peppers on skull caps. It's a symbol of purity. And 16 domes are located nearby, symbolizing family well-being, friendship, peace, and harmony among relatives. Both Uzbeks and Kazakhs love to dance. Both nationalities have many varieties of national dances. For example, each region in Uzbekistan has its own unique type of folk dance. They are Horezm, Bukhara, and Fergana. Every dance has a deep meaning. Today, my grandmother and I will show you our Uzbek national dance. Kazakhstan is the heart of Central Asia and Turkestan is the common capital of the Turkic people. In a united and cohesive Kazakhstan, people of all nationalities live in peace and harmony. This underlines the role of our country in the geopolitical arena and the capital of the Turkic world, Turkestan will soon become one of the largest tourist centers in the world. Therefore, the unity of Kazakh people should be strong and the state should be open and friendly. May all people live in peace with each other. I wish our Kazakhstan to prosper and become stronger every day. Turkestan is the capital of the Turkic nations, hence the large number of Turks and Uzbeks in our city. People of different nationalities live in Turkestan. They know and respect Kazakh language and the traditions of the Kazakh people. I think this is something to be proud of. As a young father, I want to accustom my son to both Uzbek and Kazakh traditions. May everything will be good with our people.